in Federal Convention, Friday, May 25, 1787. It was moved by the Honorable Robert Morris Esquire, one of the deputies from Pennsylvania, that a president be elected by ballot, which was agreed to, and thereupon he nominated, on the part of the said state, His Excellency George Washington Esquire. The members then proceeded to ballot on behalf of their, of their respective states, and, the ballots being taken, it appeared that the said George Washington was unanimously elected, and he was conducted to the chair by the Honorable Robert Morris and John Rutledge Esquires. The President then proposed to the House that they should proceed to the election of a secretary, and, the ballots being taken, it appeared that William Jackson Esquire was elected. The following credentials were produced and read. The House then appointed Nichols Weaver Messenger and Joseph Fry Doorkeeper. On motion of Mr. C. Pinckney, ordered that a committee be appointed to draw up rules to be observed as the standing orders of the convention and to report the same to the House. A committee by ballot was appointed of Mr. Wythe, Mr. Hamilton, and Mr. C. Pinckney, and then the House adjourned till Monday next at 10 o'clock a.m. Madison, Monday, May 14, 1787, was the day fixed for the meeting of the deputies in convention for revising the federal system of government. On that day, a small number only had assembled. Seven states were not convened till Friday, 25 of May, when the following members appeared to wit. From Massachusetts, Rufus King, New York, Robert Yates, Alexander Hamilton, New Jersey, David Brearley, William Churchill Houston, William Patterson, Pennsylvania, Robert Morris, Tomert Fitzsimmons, James Wilson, Governor Morris, Delaware, George Reed, Richard Bassett, Jacob Broom, Virginia, George Washington, Edmund Randolph, John Blair, James Madison, George Mason, George Wythe, James McClurg, North Carolina, Alexander Martin, William Richardson Davy, Richard Dobbs Spate, Hugh Williamson, South Carolina, John Rutledge, Charles Coatsworth Pinckney, Charles Pinckney, Pierce Butler, Georgia, William Few. Mr. Robert Morris informed the members assembled that by the instruction and in behalf of the deputation of Pena, he proposed George Washington Esquire, late commander-in-chief for president of the convention. Mr. Rutledge seconded the motion, expressing his confidence that the choice would be unanimous, and observing that the presence of General Washington forbade any observations on the occasion which might otherwise be proper. General Washington was accordingly unanimously elected by ballot and conducted to the chair by Mr. R. Morris and Mr. Rutledge from which in very emphatic manner he thanked the convention for the honor that had been conferred on him and reminded them of the novelty of the scene of business in which he was to act, lamented his want of better qualifications, and claimed the indulgence of the house towards the involuntary errors which his inexperience might occasion. The nomination came with particular grace from Pennsylvania, as Dr. Franklin alone could have been thought of as a competitor. The doctor himself to have made the nomination of General Washington, but the state of the weather and of his health confined him to his house. Mr. Wilson moved that a secretary be appointed and nominated Mr. Temple Franklin. Colonel Hamilton nominated Major Jackson. On the ballot, Major Jackson had five votes and Mr. Franklin two votes. On reading the credentials of the deputies, it was noticed that those from Delaware were prohibited from changing the article in the Confederation establishing an equality of votes among the states. The appointment of a committee consisting of Messrs. Wythe, Hamilton, and C. Pinckney on the motion of Mr. C. Pinckney to prepare standing rules and orders was the only remaining step taken on this day. Yates, Friday, May 25, 1787. A motion by R. Morris and seconded that General Washington take the chair unanimously agreed to. When seated, he, General Washington, declared that as he had never had been in such a situation, he felt himself embarrassed, 
that he hoped his errors, as they would be unintentional, would be excused. Mr. Hamilton, in behalf of the state of New York, moved that Major Jackson be appointed secretary. The delegates for Pennsylvania moved for Temple Franklin. By a majority, Mr. Jackson carried it, called in, and took his seat, after which the respective credentials of the seven states were read. N.B., that of Delaware, restrained its delegates from assenting to an abolition of the fifth article of the Confederation, by which it is declared that each state shall have one vote. Doorkeeper and messengers being appointed, the House adjourned to Monday, the 28th day of May, at 10 o'clock.